How's it going everyone? I've got one more Blackmagic Cinema 6K video for you, and in today's video, I'm comparing it with the Sony FX3. Now, I'll be going over several topics today, including picture, screen, battery life, low light, performance, among others. I'll put here on the screen, you'll see all the different topics that I'll be covering. For each topic, I'll designate a winner, whether it's the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K or the FX3, and we'll tally up all the points at the end of the video and see who won. Before we get started though, I just want to quickly address one of the comments in my previous video that mentioned that CFast 2.0 is not fast enough to record 6K open gate. So just so you know, all the B-roll that comes out of the Blackmagic Cinema 6K will be recorded to a CFast 2.0 via the USB-C port. With that out of the way, let's start by discussing picture quality. I've recorded some B-roll, which you can see on screen right now. Both of these cameras look really good in my opinion. Although I would say that the digital film that Blackmagic boasts, they have it written all over their website, does have a certain aesthetic to it that I really like. The way that the highlights roll off and it almost feels like they add grain, but it's not there. There's, there's something about it that is really pleasing to the eye in my opinion. Whereas the Sony FX3, it, it has more of like a clinical look to it. So the Blackmagic, I like the personality that the image has. On top of that, you're working with 6K resolution, which is just sharper, and the optical low pass filter, which the Sony FX3 doesn't have. So as far as this category is concerned, and obviously this is very debatable, I will give the point to the Blackmagic Cinema 6K. Up next, let's discuss low light. I'll show you on screen right now recordings at different ISO values so you can see how the noise compares between the two cameras. Sony's dual native ISO at 12,800 makes it a bit of a no-brainer, and so for that category, Sony wins. Up next, let's discuss form factor. So, the Blackmagic Cinema 6K, it feels really nice. It's a little bit plasticky, you know, to be expected, but the size feels really nice to work with. We'll talk about the screen in a little bit. That being said, it is hard to mount on gimbals, so if you're the type of person that does a lot of gimbal work, the size of the camera does make it difficult. We work with a Ronin RS3 Pro, which is quite versatile, and here's some B-roll so you can see what that looks like. The Sony FX3, on the other hand, is made completely out of metal, and the form factor is smaller, so it's much easier to mount on a gimbal. This category is debatable depending on the type of work you do, but I'm gonna give this one to Sony just because of the build quality itself. Up next, let's talk about the screen. So let me start by saying that I actually really like this screen. It's a beautiful five inch display that is quite bright so you can work outside. And when you shoot on this five inch display, you can actually see the bokeh. Like you, I get inspired looking at these images. Whereas the Sony FX3, you know, it's not a very bright display. It's a much smaller display, but you can tilt outwards and you have more options as to how you tilt this display. So, I'm gonna call this category a tie because although the display on the Blackmagic Cinema 6K is superior as far as size and brightness goes, this one is more versatile as far as angle. Up next, let's discuss battery life. So I did a side-by-side -side comparison of both of these cameras shooting 4K, and when the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K died, the FX3 still had 50% battery. So on average, you can sort of expect the FX3 to last twice as long as the Blackmagic. I'll show you on screen right now exactly how long each camera lasted shooting 4K. That being said, Sony does win this category by a landslide. Up next, let's discuss stabilization and autofocus. So the Blackmagic Cinema 6K doesn't have any stabilization, but it does have touch autofocus, whereas the Sony FX3 has both. So this one's a quick one. Sony wins this category. Up next, let's discuss photography. So I don't know about you, but whenever I buy a camera, I like them to be as versatile as possible. I can use them for vlogging, I can use them for corporate shoots, I can use them for live streaming, and I can use them for photography. In fact, I shoot all my thumbnails with this camera. While the Blackmagic Cinema 6K does shoot photos, it does so in a B-RAW file format, which is just not ideal because then you can't open your photos in Lightroom, you have to open them and edit them in DaVinci. On top of that, the autofocus situation is unideal, and for those two reasons, the Sony FX3 wins this category. Up next, codecs, resolutions, and aspect ratios. This category is a little bit difficult to declare a winner because while the FX3 doesn't have as many options as far as resolution is concerned, obviously the Blackmagic goes all the way up to 6K, it doesn't crop into the sensor the way the Blackmagic does. Because this camera only shoots B-RAW, if you wanted to record at UHD or even 1080p, you'd be cropping into the sensor, which is just unideal. That being said, the Blackmagic does shoot open gate, 6K, and anamorphic, so I'm gonna call this category a tie. Next category, frame rates. 
What the FX3 doesn't have in resolution, it certainly makes up for in frame rate because while it doesn't go all the way up to 6K, it does shoot up to 120 frames per second in 4K. The Blackmagic, on the other hand, is limited to 60 frames per second in 4K, and if you're in 6K open gate, you're gonna be maxing out at 30. So if you're the type of shooter that likes to shoot a lot of high frame rate material, the FX3 is gonna be the camera for you. Up next, let's discuss the HDMI output. So one of my biggest gripes with these cameras, the Blackmagic Cinema cameras, is that the HDMI output is limited to 1080p. In my opinion, this is a huge downside because Blackmagic not only makes great cinema cameras, they also have fantastic multicam workflows. But whenever we do 4K workflows, we can't easily integrate these cinema cameras into them because of the 1080p output. The Sony FX3, on the other hand, not only does it output UHD, but it can output 12-bit, which means that you can record ProRes RAW to an external recorder. So in this category, the Sony FX3 wins. Up next, let's discuss memory cards. As far as memory cards are concerned, the Blackmagic Cinema 6K can only record to a CF Express Type-B. I mentioned this in my last video, but I find this very frustrating as someone who comes from a Blackmagic background and I have tons of CFast 2.0 cards that I can't use the same cards that I use for my other cameras in this camera. Now, I would understand if the form factor were changed, if the camera got a little bit smaller, but we're talking about pretty much the exact same resolution and the exact same form factor. So it's just a little bit annoying that in order to record internally in this camera, I need to buy new cards. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I recorded all the B-roll out of the USB-C port to a CFast 2.0 card. I did so at 6K open gate with a three to one compression and I didn't have any issues. The FX3 on the other hand, not only do you get a choice between CF Express and SD, you also have two slots of each. So in this category, I'm gonna give it to the Sony FX3. Now I know there's gonna be some people who disagree with that point, but I've explained my reasoning, and if you disagree, just count that point towards Blackmagic. The next category is apps. Both of these cameras have applications you can use to remote control the camera, which is great. However, what the Sony has that the Blackmagic doesn't is not only can you control the camera, but you can actually see your framing on the phone. In my opinion, this is a huge loss for Blackmagic because you can't tilt the screen outwards for content creators, but if you could at least check your framing on the phone and like hit record remotely, it would be a much more usable camera for people who do this. I do a lot of these videos and thumbnails on my own, so I actually use the remote app quite a bit in order to remote trigger the camera, check my framing, and make sure that I'm in focus. So for those reasons, this point goes to Sony. The last topic to talk about is price. The Blackmagic Cinema 6K goes for roughly $2,500, whereas the FX3 goes roughly for $3,900. So in this category, obviously, the Blackmagic is over $1,000 cheaper, so the point goes to Blackmagic. So those are all the categories. I'm gonna put the points on screen right now so you can see at a quick glance who won. I do wanna point out that this entire comparison video does come from my and my business's perspective. And the type of work we do is corporate, behind the scenes, and multi-camera work. So for us, having a versatile camera is of the utmost importance. I do see how the Blackmagic Cinema 6K has a time and place, for example, people who do a lot of narrative shoots, directors, directors of photography, in general, people who like to be behind the camera, and people who do short films, I get it. These two cameras really could not be more different. They're certainly made for two completely different users. And now what I wanna know is which camera is right for you. Please drop me a comment. I would love to know what you guys think. And if this video helped you make a purchasing decision by using the affiliate links below, you would be directly supporting this channel. Thank you guys very much. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, a like and subscribe would mean the world to me. And if you do subscribe, I'll catch you in the next video.